This is Local Church in Evangelism, a presentation done by Hannah Hooper. We'll start with an overview of this video, which will cover eight non-negotiables given by David Platt. We'll go into who is Jesus. We'll cover some Bible teaching principles. We'll go over the First Timothy 3 model uh, of the quality of church planters over being business-minded. Mi- and then we'll have a quick reflection. So we'll start with the eight non-negotiables of church planting and evangelism. This is given by David Platt. It starts with a God-centered God giving people that we lead a glimpse of God who exalts himself. Then it goes into a word-saturated ministry which is believing that God gave us the word of God and it's the only thing that will drive people into mission and sustain them. We also have number three as a life-changing gospel and this is people not saying simply a sinner's prayer and accepting Jesus into their heart but men passing from death into life. Number four is a spirit-empowered church and that's that we have a church that is reliant on the spirit and not on ourselves. Then you go into number five, which is a Christ-driven strategy, and this is making disciples of all nations based on the Matthew 24 principle. Then you have number six, which is a people-focused goal. This is a mindset of God's gospel reaching all people. Number seven is the multifaceted approach. This is not formulaic. Uh, We have both and mindset not an either-or mindset. This is both local and global, physical and spiritual, and um, praying and going long-term and short-term work. And then number eight is a death-defying commitment. This is based on Matthew 24, 9, which basically says that our commitment to evangelism and the local church will be costly. Going into uh, Bible teaching, This is done by Sam Chan, which is basically centered around storytelling and the Bible being an oral, passed down story. Uh, This is telling this story three different times with people first listening and imagining the story, then trying to remember the story, and then being able to tell the story themselves. There's five questions that we'll go into for uh, the sake of teaching the Bible and also creating an environment where people are learning from the Bible. This could be in a Discovery Bible setting. I know that we did this a lot, quite a bit, with international students in America and then being in a predominantly Buddhist context in Southeast Asia, this is something that we do for people who are fascinated by the Bible as a historical text and just wanting to learn from stories. You'll ask them what they liked in this story, what impressed them about it, what questions they want answered in this story, and what the story teaches us about people, what the story teaches us about God or Jesus, and then also what God is teaching us from the story. Moving on, we have Jesus. Who is Jesus? So instead of asking uh, what he did and all of the miracles that he performed, we ask who he was, and that's centered around him being God in human form, and then going into why he gave his life And that was because of the predetermined plan of God. God raising him up and putting an end to death and the power of death. This is moved by um, the woman at the well story. That was Jesus coming into a placement where he was not expected to be with a Sumerian woman. And then it goes on to prophetic power of him telling her her story without her even voicing it. She was known by him without her having to seek that out herself. And then purpose is that she would go out in freedom, knowing that she was known, go and sin no more, and proclaim to all who were around her, despite how much they had rejected her, of the things that she had seen and heard. Finally, we have church planting and businessmen. So I really enjoyed this part of the section of this uh, course because it's centered around the first Timothy 3 model, and that's that church planters are really not entrepreneurs, which is something that in the Western world is so hard for us to accept because we're so productive oriented. But the heart of a church planter or a church leader is that he would be above reproach, which is greater than having a charismatic personality. It's also been shown that Bible reading, people who read the Bible four times, four or more times a week, it decreases pornography usage, divorce, bitterness, Uh, the mishandling of money, destructive views of self, anxiety. So the 
impact of the Bible over the whole entire world is uh, pretty significant and not something to be undermined. Finally, going into reflection, and this is, in what ways have you seen Bible teaching flourish? And in what ways have you seen it modeled outside of the pulpit? And then number two is, in church planting, do you gravitate towards a business-mindedness or the first Timothy 3 requirements? I think these are really important to ask ourselves and uh, something that each believer has to know about their own strengths and weaknesses to be able to make sure that they are being led by the Spirit in everything that they're doing and also clinging to the very power that God has given us to live a life in godliness in our efforts that we do for the kingdom.